Hi, I'm Doug May, and what I'd like to do is to cover the first video in our series about Quebec's electricity picture and how Labrador's Churchill Falls generating projects fit into that picture. So the video today has to do with Quebec's emerging electricity shortage and because of that shortage due to climate change, we're going to see how Churchill Falls might contribute to the urgent need that Quebec has for additional power. So what evidence do we have that Quebec has a bit of a problem? Well, in the chart before you, we'll look at the total electricity available to Quebec on a monthly basis between January 2015 and June of this year. So we've got the latest June data in monthly data in there. And what we see, a, a fairly normal picture. It looks like fairly low power here, but, but, but for the most part, it's normal. But Statistics Canada and others have known that starting in uh, 2023, storm clouds were gathering and the drought, which existed in northern Quebec around James Bay, was going to cause problems for uh, the generating projects, particularly on La Grande Riviere, where the Robert Barassa, which is in the picture you saw on our title side, is located. So, Power seems to be going down. And indeed, when we look at the latest month available, just released, we see that power, in fact, is lower than has ever been the, the case. In this slide, we want to look at the domestic demand for electricity in Quebec. And what we notice is that a very there is a very seasonal pattern, which we would expect in Quebec, because when we look at the high points here, for instance, in January 2025, uh, just over 25,000, uh, 20, sorry, 25 million uh, megawatt hours of electricity were demanded during that month. And uh, because it was January, it was a cold month. And, and so the demand keeps going down, but then you see little bumps here where it's August of uh, 2024. So you'll see this typical pattern, January going down to rising but in August, going then back up again to January or February, back down, going up and down. The important point here is that uh, for electricity producers, they have to meet the demands primarily from households in the coldest month of the year. I mean, that makes sense. If you can't supply electricity, to those families who rely on electricity for cooking, for heating, then there's going to be problems. So the rule of thumb is that you, you've got to always have enough electricity available to meet that demand. And in fact, you have to have enough standby capacity so that if something should happen to a transmission line, or something should happen to a generating station, you can bring extra power online. You don't want to be out. We have lines down and not be able to deliver electricity for very long periods. So, so this looks fairly steady. Although uh, one could argue, and Hydro-Quebec is arguing that the pattern which we see here is that demand will increase. Well, the other part of the picture, particularly in the United States, and what people are talking about more and more now, is that the demands of AI, 
and these big uh, cloud stations, which uh, uh, need for artificial in intelligence, are going to really increase the uh, demand for electricity. The other thing, of course, is that people are buying more and more electric uh, cars, and the number of households are in increasing. And maybe you want to increase more firms uh, starting up in can more industry in Canada, and they're quite often going to need electricity. So the increase in demand is extremely uh, important. If you compare this point uh, and compare it to the previous point, when you look at the demand compared to the supply, there's really not much of a of a gap there. In fact, demand. <laughs> Almost uh, demand is requiring all of your supply. And Hydro-Quebec says that's going to become worse in the, the future. And combining the first chart with this part, chart, it's not good when your supply is going down and demand is going up. Then you've got some real problems. Okay, so we looked at the total supply available in the first chart. And this chart says, well, not all of the total supply available to Quebec came from uh, generating capacity in Quebec. Some of it was imported. And you'll see here that the imports tend to once again go up in January and February, and then they go down, but they're down for other periods. So here it's a, it's a bit of a low in July. So you, you see a little bit of a seasonal pattern in the imports. Well, the important thing here is that, uh, be, you know, consistent with our argument that the supply of electricity to Quebec, within Quebec, is going down. The amount of available power is going down. Here you see the pattern seems to be breaking in 2023 and 2024 and into 25. They seem to be importing, having to import more power. So the question is, where does that power come from? And we're going to deal with that in this next slide. Most of the power that Quebec imports comes, as you see, for most of the period here, right up to 2020, from other provinces. There are a couple of blips down here, but basically most of it comes from other provinces. Well, which provinces are those? Well, well a little bit, I think, from Ontario, but most of it comes from Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, whereabouts in Newfoundland and Labrador? Well, it certainly isn't from Muskrat Fall. It's not from Bay Despair. It's not from generating capacity on the island. It's from Labrador. And where is it coming from in Labrador? But Churchill Falls. And Churchill Falls, Labrador is produced by a company called C.F. Elko, Churchill Falls and Labrador uh, Company, and it's 34.2% uh, owned by Hydro-Quebec, and the 65.8% is owned by uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro or Nelcor. An observation here is that most of the power that's imported has traditionally come from Labrador, but the person, the group that's importing the power is Hydro-Quebec, and the person who supplies the power in Labrador is, or the group that supplies the power is partially owned by Hydro-Quebec by 34.2%. The other thing which is important here, is we've got a break in the pattern starting in early 23, due to the drought, presumably. So the traditional sources of power only have so much capacity. They're not getting it from the other provinces. 
but they are importing more power. Well, where does it come? Well, if you can't get it from the provinces, you've got to get it from somewhere else. And that other place is in the United States. So rather than exporting power to the United States, they're still going to continue to do that. That is, Hydro-Quebec is. But they're having to import more and more power here. Here's a low point in March of 2025 of this year. That they're having to import a lot of power from uh, the United States. We'll find in another part of the series that this power basically comes from New York. This is the amount of power which is generated by utilities in Quebec. So the total amount of power available to Quebecers is made up of the amount that is generated here by utilities in Quebec and the amount which they import. And here you see again the seasonal po uh, seasonal power pattern rather as one would expect. But again, it, it shows that uh, the amount of that they're able to generate because of the drought is going down. Most of the power in Quebec is due to the hydro generation in, in Quebec. And that's what we look at in this diagram. So this is the percentage of total utility generation using water power or hydraulic turbines in Quebec. So it's pretty constant here, right? But so it's over 90%. So, so if, it, if it's not hydropower, what, what is it? Well, it's increasingly wind power. But here, when you're looking at the total amount of power, which seem to be almost constant, going down somewhat. But here, the amount of power being generated by hydropower is uh, is going down once again because of the, uh, the drought. They're having to rely more and more on wind power. Problem with wind power is more expensive than hydropower. And Hydro-Quebec has kept saying that the reason why our uh, electricity prices to households and to industry, such as uh, uh, aluminum uh, uh, refineries, uh, the reason why that's so low is because of very cheap hydropower. That's the key to the low prices, according to not Doug May, but according to Hydro-Quebec, it's the use of these large generating stations. But the amount of power that those generating station, stations are able to produce is going down. How does Churchill Falls fit into the existing picture? And how could the proposed infrastructure projects come to Hydro-Quebec's rescue? The proposed infrastructure projects under the uh, Memorandum of Understanding called the MOU. Okay, so let's look at that. And we'll go back to Quebec's percentage of power from other provinces. So how does Hydro-Quebec? Well, as we've just said earlier, most of the imported power traditionally has been from Newfoundland and Labrador, and that power has come from Churchill Falls. And here it's just examining that a little bit more. Because we see that, look at, this is a total generation, so I haven't broken up most of the power of Newfoundland's total generation. There's certainly hydropower on island uh, on uh, in Newfoundland, but most of the power here, a very good portion of it comes from Churchill Falls, and maybe later on from Muskrat Falls, but a fairly constant situation here. You know, there's not much of a change in, in pattern. There may be a slight change, but not here. And that's not true of up here, is it? Here we do see a decline. Here we don't see a, a decline. And here the decline would be even greater, as we saw, if we looked at those which were hydro-generated 
rather than having the wind capacity. There is still a decline, even those that are in an increase in wind power capacity. How does Churchill Falls fit in? Churchill Falls contributes about 17% of the uh, available electricity in, uh, uh, in Quebec, assuming, for example, that of the total amount of power produced by Churchill Falls, about 90% goes to Google, 10% is taken up by uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro. Now, they, there, there is the Robert Barrasso Dam, which is a, a big producer and, ha, in fact, has a higher rated capacity than, uh, has a higher rated capacity than Churchill Falls. But uh, that capacity is um, the amount of prov uh, power, as we said before, that it can actually produce is, is uh, somewhat less in a year. So it's about 78%. How could the proposed infrastructure projects come into Hydro-Quebec's rescue? Remembering this is very, very cheap power. The cheap power really comes from uh, hydro power. If you look at w wind power, uh, then it's relatively more expensive than, uh, and absolutely more expensive than hydro power. Well, the big project is the new one at Gull Island generating with the 2,250 megawatts of uh, power per hour on an hourly basis. Churchill Falls upgrade. That's the new turbines going in. Uh, 11 new turbines gives you an extra 550 megawatts of uh, power per hour. And then the Churchill Falls extension to new turbines going in gives you 1100 megawatts of power. So it's really quite a contribution. Well, what I'll leave you with are some of the takeaways from all this, pause your machines, your computers, your iPads, your laptops, and to read this, you can read this, and I won't take any more of your time, but uh, thanks for watching.